Tonight I've been working on another project for the O'Day 25, 1982 O'Day 25 sailboat that I own. Tonight I just installed some mast gates to allow the halyards to run internal to the mast instead of running down the side of the mast because if you look behind me at the top of the mast you'll notice some spreader lights up there. So right there and there you'll see some spreader lights and I was kind of concerned that those spreader lights were going to get caught by the halyards or the halyards were going to get entangled in them so I decided to be better to go ahead and run the halyards internal to the mast. So here we are all the way down here at the foot of the mast. I've taken the plate off the bottom here so this is the tabernacle plate. There are a couple of bolts through here. One of them's pretty well boogered up by a previous owner so I've removed that and internal to the mast, you can still see the wiring inside there that I've recently installed for the lights, for the spreader lights uh, that I showed you earlier, for the mast light at the, uh, at the forward edge of the mast, the steaming light, and the anchor light up at the top of the mast. This is the lower of the two exits. I've got both halyards running out the same side of the mast. They're both coming out of the starboard side of the mast. The reason for that is that the way that this boom is configured, both of the blocks for turning the reefs back towards the mast are both on the same side, which will eventually run them down the port side. So they'll be running on lines to the port side of the cockpit. So the port side of the mast and the port side of the boom were already pretty busy, so I ran the halyards out the starboard side of the mast. I've got both of them installed here. I went ahead and left the screws out of this one so I could show it to you. To make this hole, which I must admit required a little bit of fortitude because I really didn't like cutting giant holes in the mast. It, it looks bigger than it is. This hole's only three quarters of an inch across. It's about two and seven eighths inches from the end of both of these radiuses here. To make this giant hole here, I just drilled through and made two smaller holes with a progressive set of bits up until the point where I was working with the three quarter inch bit and I punched through here and here and then I just trimmed the sides here with a saw and that made a fairly clean hole. I went ahead and cleaned it up a little bit more by just sanding the inside of it with some 150 grit sandpaper so it doesn't have any sharp edges. I can't imagine that there's any way that that hole itself is going to interfere with the way that that halyard's going to exit or cause any chafing. Really simple design. I like that it doesn't include any shivs or requires the line to make too many turns. It's got a little guard in here at the top to prevent the halyard from possibly rubbing on the inside of the hole in the mast itself. Pretty easy. Cut a big hole, drilled and tapped one, two, three, four holes to mount it. A couple of screws in there and that project is complete. I was very fortunate that up at the top of this mast, and I have to apologize, it's outside the garage in the darkness because I'm always winding up working here in the evenings. On the, at the head of the mast there are shivs which will turn halyards ex, running external to the mast out to run them down to the sails but I can also run them internal to the mast itself. It's open at the head of the mast so those halyards are allowed to exit easily so they can just run straight up internal to the mast. I'm going to try to keep the wiring towards the forward side of the mast Wiring is going to run here, and then the halyards are going to run on the back side of the mast. So that way they don't conflict with each other too much. We'll see how well this works. If it doesn't work, then out of the mast come the halyards and back to the cleats and no real fuss, muss, or bother. I can always just leave these in the mast. Or if I decide later on that I want to do something else, I can go ahead and replace them with some cover plates. I hope this was helpful for anyone who's looking at doing this project. It was kind of daunting to me just because it required cutting some holes in, in the mast. And this old mast has been around for 35 years and it's been held up fine so far. So I was kind of reluctant to do that. But I'm hoping that this project is going to be useful in the long run. I hope this helps.